In this video, I'm going to be going over how to use drawing ink to create a valued painting of an observational uh, object. Um, these are the objects I had set up on my desk. I'm going to take a photograph to show you. Um, the first thing you do is you're going to draw them um, on normal paper. You're going to get your composition correct. And once it's correct, you're going to use a light box to trace onto some watercolor paper um, or rice paper so that it can absorb the ink much better. The next thing you want to do is set up your space. Now, um, in this setup, um, I'm also doing this demo live in front of students, so I'm going through all of the tools and equipment and answering a few questions. So you might see me get a little distracted here and there, but I'm going to start by making sure I have the paper I need. I'm going to grab some masking tape and make sure that I tape it down. I want to tape it down so that there's as limited um, warping of the paper as possible as it continues to get wet. Okay. Once it's nice and taped down, then I'm going to start grabbing my tools. Um, you see that I have some support materials. I have my ink that I'm using. It's the uh, Windsor Newton ink. Um, I'm going to use one of the round 10-well palettes, a uh, pipette. A uh, pipette you might recognize from science classes. Um, some bamboo brushes. They're usually quite stiff when you first get them, so you have to soften them before you start working with them. And I'm also going to be using a, a dip calligraphy pen, and I'm going to load that up with the nib right now, making sure that I match the smile to the smile to make it fit comfortably as I put it in, and it's ready to use. Don't overpressure it, or you might damage the nib. Now. Once my, all my tools and equipment are ready, I want to start preparing my palettes. I'm going to start by taking the pipette and squeezing uh, a water drop or two into each of the wells. And then I'm going to be using the pipette to drip some ink into them. Um, you'll see that I put different levels, sorry, different amounts of ink into each of the wells to change what grays that I make and then I'm going to take a scrap piece of watercolor paper and test it. I can see that it's quite dark here and I want to adjust that so I'm going to add in some more water and I'm going to mix into some of those other wells until I get to the gray that I want to start using. It's important to have a tester paper available to make sure you're checking. The first thing I'd like to do is my background. It's really important to always do your backgrounds first because it helps uh, build the layers in any image so that it makes sense. So I'm using a light wash um, to build the background and a slightly darker wash um, on the desk, the table surface that my objects are on, and then starting to block in some of those shadows. Now I want to use a light wash on the bottles to establish the lightest gray tones. With ink, similar to watercolor, you want to work from the lightest tones towards the darkest tones progressively. Um, it's really important not to apply too dark too quickly. That way you can begin to add in values as you go, getting progressively darker as you block in which areas are your medium grays and then eventually your dark grays and then eventually your solid blacks. So you want to work through all these different things. Now because I was doing a um, introduction in front of students, one of the students asked me about the pen. Um, so I went ahead and showed them how to use the pen uh, quite early on. Usually I would not do this at this point. I would leave the pen work until the very end for details, but I'm jumping ahead slightly and building in some of the textures and details on one of the bottles with pen right away. So you can see that I'm applying that and then I switch back to the brush to keep building in shadows. You can see that I'm taking my time to make the shadows progressively darker and ensure that there's contrast in the image, maintaining highlights in certain areas. That way you can create the form of the bottle. Um, form doesn't happen unless you have both highlights and shadows, so it's really important to maintain those throughout your painting by controlling your brush and not letting it get, get overfilled. But it's also really important to control your paper so that as it starts to get saturated with moisture from the ink and water that you let it dry in between. Um, if you don't have time to let it dry naturally you can always use a heat gun to dry it a little bit faster 
um, but you'll see that um, I'm trying to limit how much my ink is bleeding in certain areas because I don't want it to turn into a big gray mess. I want to control each section separately. Lastly, I want to go in and add details into my image, and the best way to do that um, is not necessarily with a fine brush, but rather with the dip pen. Um, it's important to dip pen that you dip it in enough that the well, which is a small gap in the metal portion of the, of the nib, um, gets covered completely in ink, and then you're able to go in and um, add in all those details and fine lines that help define the shape. In this case, I'm working on the slightly rusted paint covered tin can and two bottles, a water bottle and a glass bottle, both of which have um, a color to them. The glass bottle has been filled with a purpley blue paint so that it's opaque. Um, but still reflective on the outside surface, and the water bottle is a um, painted steel water bottle. So although there are some reflections in the glass bottle, there is less reflections on the tall water bottle, which is why you mostly see shadows and highlights and no reflections. Whereas on the glass bottle, you see the reflection of the tin can, and that's done by maintaining my highlights early so that I can show where those reflections are occurring. But I use my nib to add in textures, for example, with the imitation wood on the desk, as well as on details in the bottle and can to define those areas.